Hello and welcome again. In the previous video, we talked a little bit more about the inner structure of the DES and we saw a little bit of what we, this was. So let me re review quickly what we just did. So uh, the inner structure depends a lot on what this box here is. And remember what it does is in that box, we have uh, 16 rounds. Each one of those rounds that is right here is what it does all the confusion diffusion and every round would use a sub key. Every uh, every sub key here comes from the actual key, which is a, a 56 bit. And key uh, K1 through K16 are the subs keys that are coming from K. And that process of getting those keys from the key K is called key schedule, which we will see later how that's done. So every block here uses a key there. So we saw that in the, in the last video. So every, uh, the structure here of this block, as we saw in the last video, was a lot more complicated than, than of course, any of the other things we have seen before. But basically it, uh, it boils down to a picture. Basically that's what it is. So last time I did a picture, so maybe it was a little bit messy, but okay. So I will decided to put up this, uh, a little bit more organized picture or what this is doing. So what is the structure of this? Looking at it in this direction. So I have a plain text X, which is a 64 bit, because of course DES is a block cipher. You apply the initial permutation, which is done by the uh, tables we saw earlier. After that initial permutation is done, what happens is it comes down here to the first round. That's called round one. In that round, what happens is it takes the 64 uh, bit block that comes from out of here, as we saw in the previous uh, video, it divides it into the left hand side and the right hand side. And this is called L0, left hand side, right hand side. Now what happens here is that, uh, as we saw uh, in the previous video, the right hand side, which is a 32 bit, is gonna come all the way down here and it goes unchanged, nothing happens to it and it goes to the kind of output here and that's going to be converted into the left hand side of the next 64 bit block. So this is 32 bits will go down here exactly as they are over here. Now this is a little bit more complicated as we saw uh, in the previous video. So what happens here is the F function is the one that is going to encrypt or is going to put the R1 in here in the following way. Uh, this is the F function, what does all the uh, confusion diffusion. So the, what the F function is, it has two inputs. One of the inputs is the R0 itself. So the R0 comes in here, the, the right hand side, the one that is copied here, it also comes here into the F function. And the other input of the M function is the key, which is a 48 bit that goes also in here into the F function. Now the inner structures, as I mentioned of that F function, we will see that later, but basically what it does is it takes these two inputs R0 and K1 and transform that into a 32-bit block. That 32-bit block is going to be sore with L0, going to the left-hand side of this one, is sore dead, bit-wise, so bit by bit. And of course, 32 and 32 is going to produce a 32-bit. That 32-bit is the one that comes out in, here in R1. So this is the output, the 64-bit block that comes out of the first round. In the next round, same thing is gonna happen. Same structure here, so this R1 here and L, uh, L1, so the R1 will go into the next bit here on the left, and the L1 is gonna do exactly the same here, so the L1 is gonna be sorted. This L1 is gonna be sorted with whatever the output of the F function is here, of course coming from the key uh, two in this case, and it comes uh, out of uh, the 64 bit here and it goes into the next round and so on and so forth until you go to the last round. The last round here, which is uh, the last thing that it does here, the does in that uh, block. Um, the same thing, R15 goes into the L16, the left hand side. This right hand side is the one coming from the F function doing the soar with the left hand side. And remember, because it's the, this is the 16 round, it's gonna, it's gonna use the key 16 coming from the key. And again, it's gonna use the right hand side here 
that which is a 32 bit so these two inputs of f1 add again the right hand side and the key goes into the f the f that's something to it which we will see later comes out at 32 bit source that with the left hand side here bitwise and put it finally in r16 so those are the 16 16 rounds there and all of them are the same except for uh, the key here that we have key 16 and of course uh, the right hand side because it changes every time finally at the very last part what it's going to do is it's going to just change it again so the right hand side will go into the left hand side the left hand side will go into the right hand side and i'll over here i have a 64 block again after all those rounds finally then we apply the final permutation which is the initial permutation inverse which we saw in previous video which is can be computed with a table one that final permutation is done when it's coming from here then what happens there and then you get the cipher text of course so that's the whole process basically we still have some black boxes here the couple of black boxes that we have in this cause are what is the f function doing exactly and how you get the keys the sub keys from the actual key so that's the two things uh, we haven't looked at it yet so we're going to zoom in those things so we're going to look at the inner structure of those things the function f and the uh, key schedule uh, how do we get the 16 keys from the one that we have that is 56 only so in general what happens in the i round and this is the reason i'm going to do it is because this is the uh, way you mathematic mathematically going to write this down if you are in the i round so you have again the left hand side the right hand side the right hand side comes right after here that thing happens and you put it in the left hand side of the next block the 64 and that is the li so this this li comes right from the right hand side of this one no changes are made here in this transformation all the bits that are here are copied exactly in the left hand side of this one the one that is different of course is that one so that one that i explained again the same thing again 48 bit sub key comes into the f function as well as the right hand side of my block here the r i minus one comes in here so it has as this function here has two inputs to the key and the r i minus one the output of this function is a 32 bit which is stored with the left hand side of that block bitwise and that's put into the right hand side of the next block so mathematically what that means all that picture that is there it can be written mathematically in a very simple way in this in this way in math language what that means is the left hand side here this li remember that is exactly the right hand side so that's what this equation means the left hand side is exactly the right hand side of the previous uh, block and this right hand side that you see here how do you obtain that that's soar soar with what the r r i is soar with the l i minus one with whatever comes from this function f and that's exactly what it says here so the r i is the left hand side and you sort it with the output of the function f that has input r i minus one and k i so that's basically how mathematically you're gonna uh look think about this one of course if you were to implement this in a software then you will be looking at these kinds of things you won't be looking of course at the picture the picture is just a representation to uh, explain more or less what the cipher is doing but actually the software representation will probably use something similar uh, to this one right here so again what i said is there are two things that we need to look into details here what is this f function doing exactly what it does and we're going to go into the details of that one and how do we get this key from our actual key that's called the key schedule so giving one key i want 16 and they're going to be in general different keys coming from that key over there so in the next video what we're going to do or what i'm, what I'm going to do is we're going to look at what the function f is doing so what is that structure there this is another black box that we need to zoom in 
we need to open and see exactly what the F function is doing. So in the next video, we'll actually look at the inner structure of this function F right here. So I'll see you in the next video.